Hello everyone. I have been asked this question multiple times. Uh, why is 5G called 5G? Right? Because uh, for 3G, uh, it, you have different technologies like uh, UMTS, CDMA 2000. Uh, for 4G, you have LTE, uh, LTE Advanced, WiMAX, etc. So why is 5G called 5G? Uh, this is what I'm going to have a quick look at uh, in this particular video. Right, so let's start with GSM, uh, which is the most popular 2G uh, technology. Now the thing is, when GSM came out, uh, it wasn't really called 2G, right? It was just uh, another technology to differentiate from the analog variants. So over the years, the GSM uh, logo has also uh, undergone different changes. So this used to be the GSM logo initially uh, used. And this is the one uh, which is being used right now. So as it says, GSM is the most popular 2G technology and it's still being used today. And uh, there are a lot of different 2G systems. Uh, this is just naming uh, some of them. In around 1997-1998, uh, ITU came up with IMT 2000 uh, network requirements. What they said is any technology that wants to be compliant to IMT 2000 should meet certain requirements. So now I know this picture is not a very good resolution, but this is a picture from back in 97-98. Uh, in those days, the resolution were not was not great anyway. And uh, it has simple requirements that uh, if it's a, a an indoor, uh, if that uh, network, if the technology is applied indoors, then it should be able to give 2 Mbps. If it's a pedestrian uh, low speed vehicular 384 Kbps, and if it's high speed vehicular, it's 144 Kbps. So because this IMT 2000 came, the requirements came when we already had 2G, uh, people started calling uh, IMT 2000 as 3G. So there wasn't a standard 3G. Uh, whatever technologies uh, were compliant to IMT 2000 became 3G. So as you can see, there were multiple uh, technologies, right? So you had the WCDMA, CDMA 2000, uh, TDC, SCDMA or TDCDMA, Edge and DECT. And there were two main competing bodies, the 3GPP, right, and 3GPP2. So 3GPP2, uh, in 2G, they had IS95 standards, and 3GPP2 was actually dominated by Qualcomm. So you had IS95 as the 2G technology, and this evolved to CDMA2000, which became a 3G technology. Uh, 3GPP, uh, which was basically the third generation partnership project, uh, a lot of different uh, separate bodies like Etsy in Europe, Arib in Japan, uh, they all came together and they formed 3GPP. So the 3GPP, the other technology, the technologies which were standardized by 3GPP were UMTS, which was FDD uh, based technology, the frequency division duplex based technology. And then there was a time division duplex based technology called TDSCDMA. The TDSCDMA came much later and it was designed uh, specifically for China. So, you know, uh, the, the, the Chinese vendors and operators and uh, some other companies, they basically came together to form this TDSCDMA standard, which was uh, rolled out by China Mobile. And probably it's the only operator who have rolled out a full-fledged TDSCDMA system. Now, um, so the CDMA 2000 and the TDS CDMA are not very popular. So I won't look at them further. So it was the, the, the UMTS, uh, uh, which was defined by 3GPP, which is generally known as uh, 3G. And there are a lot of evolution uh, of this uh, 3G. Uh, so you initially had very low data rates. It got evolved to HSDPA, HSUPA, HSPA plus, and there are many variants of HSPA plus. Uh, I've given some uh, numbers like 3.5G, 3.6G. You know, it's 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 not really that important, but this was used by different vendors and analysts uh, over different times. So 
when 4G uh, system was being uh, defined by ITU, well, of course, they don't call it 4G. So uh, they decided to call it uh, IMT advanced, right? But this, this particular picture, this is known as the Venn diagram. So this Venn diagram shows that you had, uh, we had IMT 2000, which got enhanced to enhanced IMT 2000. And now it's being enhanced further uh, to IMT advanced which is uh, going to be the fourth generation mobile system. So in terms of what we have looked at, the 3G UMTS is IMT 2000. Uh, the HSPA, HSPA Plus is the enhanced IMT 2000. And the 4G or LTE is the IMT Advanced. Now I've already said LTE is 4G here, but there were other technologies which we will look at in a, uh, in a minute. Uh, but note uh, in this Venn diagram, the peak data rate which was defined as a part of uh, uh, IMT Advanced was uh, 1 Gbps, right? So, so first I should actually mention here that uh, what happened is when 4G was being rolled out initially, uh, there were some networks and specifically I've uh, mentioned T-Mobile and AT&T here. Uh, and what they said is like, okay, so you know, we had this 3G network, which was like, okay, it gave certain data rates, but now we are rolling out the HSPA plus networks. In a way, you can say that HSPA plus were sort of like similar to the first generation of 4G networks, right? Or uh, the, yeah, so the first generation of LT networks. So they started calling their HSPA plus system as 4G even though it wasn't really 4G, it was 3.5G uh, or 3.6G or 3.7G, depending on what variant you had. But they started using the term 4G, which was like a ma marketing ploy. And this caused a lot of uh, confusion, especially, especially in uh, America, where people would go and basically get a 4G phone and a 4G contract, but it wasn't LTE. So, this is uh, something you should keep in mind, you know, when we come to 5G, just keep this in mind. So coming back to IMT Advanced and 4G technologies, uh, the 3GPP2, uh, which uh, had the CDMA 2K, uh, they evolved it uh, further to what they termed as the Ultra Mobile Broadband, right, the UMB. And they decided that this is going to be the 4G technology uh, for, as a part of a uh, they are uh, 3GPP2. Uh, in 3GPP, uh, we had GSM, which evolved to UMTS and HSPA, HSPA Plus, and then we had evolution to LTE. There was a new uh, new uh, player uh, for, which actually submitted their technology for 4G and got approved, which is WiMAX. And initially, the industry was very worried about WiMAX. Uh, because they didn't have the baggage, legacy baggage of the voice calls, etc. So industry thought that the mobile industry thought like, hey, WiMAX can come and succeed. So that's why they actually uh, made their standards uh, meeting. Uh, it used to happen much uh, sooner than it would regularly happen. So initially it used to happen every three months, but it, they started having it every six weeks. So one and a half months. So to catch up uh, the LTE standards and release it before WiMAX become popular and they succeeded. So the 3GPP2's UMB, it basically died out because no operator or no vendor committed to it. So UMB, you will not find it anywhere uh, being deployed or used, right? In fact, I don't even think the standards are complete. And WiMAX, even though they found a lot of initial success and they rolled out in some countries, it basically died out in favor of LT uh, or and the LT evolution, evolution because you can achieve economy of scale if every vendor operator uh, is deploying the same technology you can get uh, the standards much better much faster uh, and you can actually get a lot more handsets devices gadgets so LT succeeded in the end <clears throat> so when you generally mention 4G nowadays, it's generally always LTE, right? Because there is no other real competition from any other body, 
like a 3GPP2 is gone and even though the WiMAX forum and IEEE are doing some enhancements to WiMAX, it's, uh, it's, it's not as popular uh, as LT. So we have seen LT enhanced from uh, to LT advanced and LT advanced pro. So what exactly is LT? Is it 3.9G or is it 4G? Because the initial versions of LT uh, were only capable of 100 Mbps in the downlink and 50 Mbps in the uplink uh, in release 8 and release 9. Remember in the Venn diagram, I pointed out that uh, the IMT advanced requirements was that uh, you should have at least one Gbps. It doesn't say in downlink or uplink, but basically, basically it should be one Gbps in downlink and one Gbps in uplink. You know, that's the kind of requirement. So LT definitely does not meet that requirement, but that doesn't stop uh, a network calling their basic LT network as 4G, right? And then LT advance came. Now some of the different terms used in the market was uh, so some of them called their LT as 3.9G, LT advanced as 4G, some of them called their LT advanced network as 4G plus, advanced 4G uh, and even 4.5G, right? Because they just wanted to differentiate from LT. And then later on when LT advanced pro came, uh, uh, by that time industry had sort of come to a consensus that actually LT Advance is just 4G, right? So they said like, oh, LT Advance Pro is 4.5G, right? Some of them, uh, some of the vendors decided to call this as 4.9G, uh, you know, with certain enhancement on top of 4.5G. And uh, it doesn't even stop uh, some uh, operators claiming that, hey, I have LT Advance Pro and this is 5G. So to give an example is uh, uh, back in 2015, uh, the Turkey's president uh, announced that, hey, you know, we don't have 4G yet. Why don't we just skip 4G and jump directly to 5G? And then uh, the next year uh, we had Turk Telecom uh, announced that, hey, we are going to introduce 5G like technology, which was basically what you can say is the LT Advance Pro and a little bit of enhancements maybe on top of that. And instead of calling it 4.5G or something, they decided to call it 5G. So the thing is that, you know, ITU defines uh, like IMT 2000, IMT Advanced, right? And uh, the 3GPP defines certain technology names like UMTS, HSPA, uh, LT, LT Advanced, LT Advanced Pro. But there could be a lot of confusion. Now, you noticed that there are there is no more real competition uh, to 3GPP, right? With the 3GPP2 gone and uh, like, you know, even WiMAX, uh, IEEE or WiMAX forum and all, they have not been able to achieve the scale that LT has achieved. So they made a very bold move. They decided to call the next generation of uh, technology as 5G to avoid any kind of confusion, right? So, you know, when you have LT, LT Advanced and LT Advanced Pro, are they all 4G or some of them 4.5G or 4.9G or whatever. So to avoid all kind of confusion, they decided to call the next generation of technology as 5G. And this 5G technology will have to meet the IMT 2020 requirements which are which has been laid out by ITU. So there are three main scenarios which have been defined by uh, ITU and which is uh, the enhanced mobile broadband EMBB, uh, massive machine type communications MMTC and ultra reliable low latency communication URLLC. And you can see all the requirements which have been laid out here. So for EMBB, uh, you know, the technology should meet uh, certain requirements like a 20 Gbps, uh, which, uh, which has been mentioned here, or uh, massive MTC, you can have up to 1 million devices per kilometer square, per square kilometer. And uh, for ultra reliable low latency communication, it's like 1 millisecond latency. Now, of course, these are all just requirements, you know, in practice, it won't be exactly as clear cut 
as it's mentioned here but you get an idea of what the requirements are so 3gpp even though they have mentioned that the next generation of technology is 5g they would now have to define a technology which meets the requirements of imt 2020 and once it meets the requirements uh, there is going to be a submission process so which you can see uh, this slide is uh, from one of the 3gpp presentations and you can see that uh, there is going to be submission so uh, it's going to start like uh, you know the initial templates would be submitted in uh, 2018 uh, with the final submission around june 2019 and once this is approved by imt uh, itu uh, 5g will become uh, imt 2020 compliant technology and this is why basically 3gpp is just called it 5g because there is uh, no competition from any other uh, industry body so 5g is going to be imt 2020 compliant and uh, that's about it uh, i hope you actually found this useful uh, and if there are any comments uh, please feel through to uh, to add them in the in the youtube uh comment section below thanks